Morning. What's going on with this bloody weather? It's meant to be spring. I feel like I'm a confession. My name's Michael, I'm a hiker. It's been almost two weeks since my last hike. <sighs> two weeks, no walk. And another weekend is on us. I've had another couple of walks planned. And unless I want blowing off the hills, they're not happening either. It's meant to be spring, for God's sake. Where's the sunshine and the clear days and the solid floor? Done with boggy walks as well. Right, sod it. I don't care where it is. I'm going for a walk. Yeah, let's go. Morning. Well, I'm out. I'm about. I'm back talking to myself in the middle of nowhere. So, I had to get out for a walk. It's getting really stir crazy at home. Because as I said, the weather, I'm preaching to the converted probably, the weather's been dreadful. And I've had. I wouldn't say better walks, because most walks are okay. But places I've never been, places to go and explore. And the weather's just... If you can't see anything, I can't show you guys anything other than fog and rain. There's no point going. It just won't be enjoyable. So, I'm in the Beeston area. Started at Beeston Castle. Now, the route I did last time will be up in the corner. I've started in the car park opposite Beeston Castle, which, Mike at home, might have a quick update about the castle. Yeah, thanks for that, Mike. Beeston Castle is a former royal castle built in the 1220s. It's currently perched 350 foot up on a sandstone crag with views for miles. The castle itself was partly demolished after the Civil War in 1646 under an Oliver Cromwell order to actually prevent its use uh, in the future. Well, thanks for that. At home, Mike. Back to me. Six and a half mile. Coming out of Beeston. Heading off to the village of Bunbury. Might be able to make the mill at Bunbury. Um, you pay to get in, it's a tourist attraction, but I don't know if you can get alongside it. But I'm going to go and have a look. Then I'm going to go up to Bunbury Locks and the canal. Along the canal, and back to Beeston. So about six and a half miles, about three hours with a bit of faffing. And hopefully, this weather won't interfere with the walk that much, but I can see the clouds, and we're probably gonna get some of that liquid sunshine. But I'm out, I'm about, let's go. Sing, won't you sing with me? Leave everything for me. Stay the night, oh, miss your flight Walk through the rain with me Get soaked to the skin, feel free Shut the world out Let's hang out Now, I've seen photos of this route, I've never walked it myself But I've seen photos of the route, where I'm stood now I think it's a cornfield. I could be wrong. Or a farmer. Um, I, 
can barely grow chilies. But in the photographs, there, both either side of this path, it's up well it way over your head. But once again, <laughs> my timing's lousy, and all I get is my field of cares. Behold, I have no cares left. Up your head and lead. Count the stars. Oh. 20 minutes in, and I can already feel myself go. It's peaceful, misty. It's good to be out. Go on. If you buy a house out in the country, close to public footpaths and stuff, and you've helped keep them open, kudos to you. Big respect. I like using them. It does make me wonder, when you get to places like this, how many walkers actually try and go through the hedge or go on the land and... Because it would annoy me. Nothing's gonna make me look away Lover or friend Real or pretend Church at Bunbury. So off we go. I'm gonna let the past be filled with smoke. And I will try to fix what has been broken. And take this weight off my shoulders, cause I know yesterday ain't coming back. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the past stay in the cold. Bunbury Mill. Not open. I think it's only open one day a week. That's on a Sunday between one and five. Not a little walk around. Can't see the wheel, but it could be inside the building. I can hear the water. I can see the mill. Can't see anything else. So if you want to see inside, come on a Sunday between one and five. Decent sized car park. That's all I've got to say. What about you, Mike? Have you got anything to say? Yeah, thanks for that, Mike. Oh, don't forget you've got a flask of tea. 
Right then, Bunbury, the mill of Bunbury. It's got a long history covering around 830 years. Um, Bunbury was actually a settlement in the Doomsday Book in the hundred of Rushton and the county of Cheshire. In the Doomsday Book, it only had a recorded three households in 1086, putting it in the smallest of the settlements ever recorded. There's no reference to the mill during the Doomsday, but it is almost certain that the present mill was built and in working order by 1st of November 1844. never done a barge holiday give it a go I did one a few years back never really wanted to do one ever my son at the time six or seven decided we'd do it and if you want to go somewhere slowly and you're never in a rush to do anything do a barge we took one out of Trevor Basin went over the Ponte aqueduct it took us about three days to get to somewhere like Ellesmere, I think it was called. Lovely little town, so much so. After the holiday, we drove back to go and have a look. It took us three days on the barge to get there. I think it took us 35 minutes in the car. But it's great. It's quiet, you just potter along. And when you want to stop for lunch, just jump off, tie yourself up. It's a great way to spend a week. Give it a go. previously mentioned I've done a barge holiday and the reason I've just filmed that bit there the little lip that I pointed out <laughs> halfway through the holiday we had to turn round not easy in a 74 foot barge but it's basically just control crashing into a bank anyway I digress We'd reached something called Grindley Locks, the staircase lock. And in our ultimate wisdom, or probably my ultimate wisdom, rather than just going down the locks, mooring up, and going back up the locks in the morning, the brainwave was, let's just turn around now go back up the locks and more up at the top and that way when morning comes we don't have to wait for any of the barges we can just bugger off seemed like a cracking idea and it was going so well 
We went in the first lock, up we went. Julie and Stuart working the locks like champs. And then, got in the middle lock. And I suddenly run aground, and I couldn't figure out why. Now it turns out that if the people who've used locks before you don't do it properly, the middle lock doesn't have enough water for you to go into and that's what happened and we got stuck on that lip. And some rather inebriated Irishmen came back with some advice which was, we'll flood the top lock, your barge will just nestle itself nicely and then when it, when it does, just move yourself into the, into the, into the lock. They released the torrid of water, torrent of water even, torrent of water, it was torrid, but it was a torrent of water. I decided in my wisdom I wasn't going to stay on the barge, and I'm glad I didn't. Because that barge <laughs> shot out of that lock and flew back into the other gate and I'd have gone flying. So, moral of the story is, if you get stuck, it's probably that lip. And don't let Irishmen persuade you to empty the lock. All good fun though. It's really perched there quite precariously, isn't it? Right then, there we have it. Three hours, just shy of seven and a half miles. Decent walk, wasn't planning on coming. Decent route, canal's a bit muddy and boggy, but um, yeah, it's nice to be out. Had a bit of rain, no biggie. So now I'm gonna go home and have a cup of green tea. Did I say green tea? And then beer. Keep dancing with the devil,